Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 9, the ninth book in the Bible, 1 Samuel. Nevertheless, continue from chapter 8, we're reading on. Nevertheless, from what chapter 8, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun, and the land of Nephtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, in Galilee of the nation. So there's more destruction, there's more judgment upon people who have not relied on God and not put their trust in God who has not obeyed the word of God and as we go into the judgment and we talked about when you rebel against God your ground is, is, is made chaff it's dust it ain't gonna grow nothing you get weeds and you get thorns and just trials and tribulations for going against God and it continues in chapter 9 verse 1 and then something funny this comes up I don't mean funny ha ha is the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light and in chapter 2 we are in a prophecy of the first advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are told in what time Jesus comes, his first advent, but the people are in dark. There are 400 years silence between Malachi and the Lord Jesus Christ. 400 years. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes are leading the people in laws that are not even in the scripture putting burdens upon them that they will not do themselves you know the, the swallowing down the camel the strain at the net there is judgment upon the land there is utter confusion there is darkness and then the light and by the time we get to uh, verse 2 this is not the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ but this is when he starts his ministry And we find this in Matthew 4, verses 15 and 16. They had dwelt in the land of the shadow of death. And now this is a, a second advent passage, too, of, of uh, 28, 18 of this book. A cloud of death with the tribulation. But there was death in the time of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's funny, when Jesus is on this planet, walking about, teaching and preaching and doing signs and wonders, there was no death. And there was, if there was death, Jesus came and arose them from, from death. He goes to the graveyard, Lazarus says, Lazarus, come forth. There's a, there's a funeral of a, of a child. He goes up, touches the beer, and the child's awake. Other than that, there is no recording death outside John the Baptist losing his head that is the only death that's recorded during the time of Jesus ministry as far as I know and then when he comes back there's death when they're in the, the wilderness and running down the sail of Petra there is death upon them that have the light shine thou has multiplied the nation they're grown they're multiplied today I don't think you can count the Jews I don't think you can count all the ones that Adolf Hitler cremated. That number that, that is said of how many could be worse number. And they came from one man and his wife, Abraham and Sarah, who Abraham was 100 years old and Sarah was 90 years old. And you've got a population of people who have survived generation after generation after generations and have not been put away that are still here in 2015 where you can't even find a Babylonian and America's going the way of death America is not going to last much longer but these people have 
and not increase for, for uh, excuse me, and not increase the joy. Man, they had trials, they had tribulations. When Jesus comes, they're under the, the, the authority of Rome. When uh, Moses comes, they're under the authority of Egypt. They are taskmasters. They are trouble. They're not even a ruler of their own people. They weren't happy when Jesus came. They were happy when Jesus was, was the signs, the wonders, and the preaching. They thought when he came in a triumphal entry and in Jerusalem, here's the king, he's going to destroy Rome. Hosanna, you know, when he couldn't do it, crucify him. Now that comma, or that colon, I can't really see what it is. Now remember we talked about this when we read uh, in Luke, when we read... Uh, in chapter 8 verse 3 to that comma there was nine months and I said you got to watch the commas the periods and the semicolons the colon. that verse 3 of chapter 9 that colon or comma I can't tell what it is is a difference between the first and second advent they joy before thee but it said not increase the joy and then they joy in harvest that land over there today is just desert I don't know if I've ever seen a picture of Jerusalem with a green tree you're talking about two advents you're talking about the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and now the joy before thee God Jesus according to the joy in harvest the Bible says that the curse is removed off in the millennium and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. A bunch of army men, they go in and they capture a city. And here they're rejoicing of all the gold, the silver, the women, the, the cows, and the knickknacks, the patty wax, and get the dog a bone stuff. Oh, look at this, you know. You know, as they, difference when they divide the spoil, the first advent, the Lord Jesus Christ casting lots for his vesture. Here they're happy like men of, you know. Taking the booty. For thou hast broken the yoke of his brethren. Burden, excuse me. That is not the first advent. A Jew today that dies will, will be buried. And his soul will be like the rich man waking up in, in hell. You bury the body and the soul is in hell by rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. He hasn't listened to their burden. They're all over the world. They had a great burden during World War II, staying alive. Jews have been in slavery. They were slavery in Rome, under Rome, when Jesus died and was buried and arose in the grave and ascended up to heaven, Acts chapter 1. They were still in the, under the government. The government of Rome was killing the apostles because they rejected him. That's not the first heaven. And the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. That's Judges 6, 1 through 8, chapter 7, verse 12 through 14, chapter 12, uh, 28, in the book of Judges. They were constantly under the oppressor. They were under the oppressor in the book of Exodus. Until Moses came. They were under the oppression of, of Rome when Jesus came and remained under the pressure because they rejected their Messiah and became uh, oppressor of, over of Germany and, and Russia. Serving America, handling money that has idle pictures of dead men. And that is a violation of the Ten Commandments to the Jew to handle money that has pictures of dead men. Never mind the pictures. On our coins and on our paper money are pictures of dead men. And the Bible says you're not to make images. The Jews that obey the law it says you're not to make an image of a man or beast or anything under the waters. 
For every battle of the water is with confused noise. That's interesting. Confused noise. I mean, they've been in battles. What's a confused noise? Something they never heard before. And the garments rolled in blood. Death. Guts. But this. An upcoming battle. A future battle. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Petroleum, gasoline, oil, diesel is a fuel of fire. Your car will say fuel tank that burns. You have a prophecy here of a military running with burning and a fuel of fire. Tanks, jeeps, battleships, airplanes run with some form of fuel of fire. For unto us, oh wow. Look at this. Now we jump back into prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ. For unto us, the Jews, a child is born. Jesus, the human. A child is born, Jesus, as a human. Unto us, a son, Jesus, is given. Jesus as God. A child is born is the human nature of the Lord Jesus Christ. A son is given. For God so loved the world that he gave. That's Jesus as God. Given is the adoption. Born is the birth. You've got the dual nature of the Lord Jesus Christ in, in verse number six. Six being the number of man. Jesus was 100% God and he was 100% man. And Joseph did not give birth to Jesus. He adopted Jesus. Mary giving birth. The virgin birth is here in verse six. Joseph was legally Jesus' father by adoption, not by birth. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. Well, it said earlier that, uh, verse number four, For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of the oppressor. Had the Jews received Christ as their Messiah, he would have taken over the Roman government. He would have to die first. But that you never know, because they did not receive him as the Messiah. They would have got the victory they wanted had they received him. But they rejected him. He says, uh, I can never get this verse right, but he says, you know, cast your burdens upon me, or, you know. Take my yoke. Take his yoke. It's light and easy. I can never get that verse right. Listen, you becoming the yoke of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's lighter than the yoke of man. It is lighter than the yoke of the law. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Psalms 139, 1 through 6, and Isaiah 28, 29. To me, his name is wonderful. Counselor. Somebody you go to, and look at the capital letters. Somebody you go run to for advice. The mighty God. Now show that one to a Jehovah Witness. Jesus Christ 
is God. For unto us a child is born. For unto us a child is given the adoption, the birth, the human, the God part of Jesus. And the Bible says, Mighty God. All the everlasting capital F, Father. I want what their Bible, I want what they teach about that one. Jesus Christ is God, the Prince of Peace. And peace is one of the fruits of the one of the fruit of the Spirit. Daniel 9.23. Of the increase. I'm looking for the note here. Of the increase. Second Peter three seven to thirteen, Isaiah forty five eighteen and sixty six twenty two, of his government. Well, he doesn't have a government right now, so it's got to be future. He's going to rule as king on David's throne, and peace there shall be no end, eternal peace. Well, that certainly is not today. Go over to Iraq and ask our soldiers over there in Afghanistan if there's eternal peace. And they'll laugh at you. So that's not now. That's yet future. Upon the throne of David. Uh-oh. Not Calvary. Upon the throne of David. First advent was Calvary. Second advent is the throne of David. The first advent is the suffering Messiah. The second advent is the ruler of the king. The first advent, he was crowned by men of thorns. The second advent, he's going to be crowned with the crowns by the saints. And upon his kingdom, to order it. He's going to be the one in ruler, in authorship, in and to establish it with judgment, proper, holy judgment, no bribery, and with justice from henceforth, from the throne of David, ever for ever. Jesus Christ at the second advent, when he comes back, with the sword out of his mouth, will be the judge. With proper and holy ju justice and with judgment forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. It will come to pass. He's been born. According to this chapter, we know Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he is born. He's seated at the right hand of the Father, Acts chapter 1. And he's coming back. You see the first advent and the second advent just full in seven verses. Seven in the Bible is a number of complete. Finish. And that's a great place. We're going to stop right there. We're going to stop with the first coming. Already happened. And we're going to look to the second coming, which is yet to happen. Of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ as your God and Savior and Father, you are in big trouble. You better check your salvation because you need to believe in Jesus Christ as the mighty God and as the everlasting Father. That's the Messiah that was born and died for sin. That is the Lamb of God which take away the sins of the world. That is by verse chap uh, verse number, uh, what was it again? Number five. For, for, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. John 3, 16 is in Isaiah 9, 6. You better believe in John 3, 16. You better believe in Isaiah 9, 6. That the Son that was given, Isaiah 9, 5 is the son that is in verse 6 
the mighty God, the everlasting Father. You better believe that.